Okay. Yeah. And 90 days, how many men have you slept with? One. You only had an HIV test? Yes. What's your results? Negative. You want to get on prep? I've been on it before. It was very inconsistent. Okay. We have changed your mind. You come back. Mm-hmm. When you hear something like that, like, what do you think as someone who does this every day? I think you should get on it. Okay. Welcome to Jackson, Mississippi. In terms of public health, the state is dealing with a lot. So let's take a quick check of their vitals. 82% of the people living here are on high blood pressure medication. 70% of the state reports being overweight. And 15% of people here are living with diabetes. I call this my family's medical history. Their problems are my problems. But the Deep South is also facing another health crisis. Southern states account for 51% of new HIV cases. And in Mississippi, they are sixth highest for HIV transmission. These are huge problems, and you have to analyze the root of them. I'm talking about things like access to education, living wages, food security, and simply having a doctor you're able to call about anything that goes on in your body. We're also still in the South, so you've got to talk about prevalent Christian values, racism and mistrust in a system that many say disregards them. They're tackling all of this and trying to change the narrative about public health in Mississippi. All right, Jacktown, that's about my time. Mr. Main is up next with all your COVID-19 information, hip hop news and rumors, and anything else that you may need to know about. Hey, if you hadn't heard and anyone told you, stay safe and we love you. Nikki 727, we are the beat of the Gabbro, streaming online at the beat of the Gabbro.com. Guys, in the studio joining me today, I have Deja, the Director of Organizational Development with My Brother's Keeper, and Cody, correspondent with Newsy. And Cody, what is going on? How are you? I've been here for 12 hours and I got grits in my system already, so I'm doing good. <laughs> so I'm doing, doing good. Really good. I'm doing good. I'm blending in. I'm blending in. I it. love it. National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day is coming up yes. February 7th. And your organization actually started yes. this awareness Yes, started. back in 1999, the founder of the company and a bevy of other black men went to Washington, D.C. And they basically proclaimed that rates are going down all across the country. People of different ethnicities are seeing a decline in their rates, but black people in the South were not. And we wanted to make sure that we put a spotlight on the way that the epidemic was impacting black people. And that was the establishment of National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Cody, you are here doing a follow-up. Exactly, so we came down, we worked with Deja. Then a year after that, we worked with Deja and Dr. Fauci joined that story with us as well, just to kind of give us a progress report of where we're at. And three years later, we're looking at the rates. They're still relatively stagnant. So what tools are out there and how do we get more people to have access to those tools? So that's what I'm doing down in Jackson. At the beginning of mm -hmm. the COVID pandemic, everyone was saying, who is it? Is it impacting white people, black people, old people, young people? And most importantly, I need confirmation that it's not gonna impact me. But COVID did a number on everybody and said, uh, yeah, check this out. I'm coming for everybody, I'm equitable. HIV, I think, would work the same way as it relates to prevention and understanding if we would talk about it as much as we talk about COVID. Most people think, okay, well, I don't have HIV because, and they fill in the blank. I'm married, I'm yeah. young, um, I'm monogamous. That's not how HIV works. If you've never gotten an HIV test, you don't know what your status is. You also gotta talk about it. So I, I live in Chicago, and it's like, when I ride the train, I see a poster of two men kissing on the train, and it, that's the target audience. You come to the South, None nothing. We don't nothing. Nothing. The we nothing. Don't talk the about the closest really. thing I saw in, in Atlanta was a billboard that said, having risky sex. It makes it feel like what you're doing is dirty, when really, your sexual health is a part of your overall health. But we're all having it. Yep. Uh, most of us. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, most of us. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully. Exactly. But you've got to talk about it in a way where you can be proactive. 
I totally agree. I totally agree. So first thing, get tested. Yes, and we are providing free testing at all of our service locations. We really need to go ahead and take HIV and say, this is something that's completely preventable. We have enough on our plate. Let's go ahead and end the epidemic in Mississippi. Let's end the epidemic in Jackson. Good morning. I am here for my 8.15 appointment. Yes. Today, we are undergoing a full health screening. So they are treating me like anyone who would want to come into the clinic and talk about HIV prevention. Thank you so much. Treating HIV has changed immensely in the last 40 years. Drugs like AZT became available in the 80s, but it had deadly side effects. In the 90s, a combination of drugs emerged and they kept people with AIDS, the late stage of HIV, alive for longer. And today, there are dozens of options to prevent and treat HIV with just one pill. PrEP, or pills like Truvada and Descovy, can be taken daily by healthy people to prevent contracting HIV. Also promising, Moderna is testing a vaccine for HIV prevention using knowledge they learned making the mRNA vaccine for COVID-19. My mom is still my emergency contact because it's truly the only phone number I can memorize. So that's great. For the record, I am nervous. The feeling stems from once being young and afraid of talking about who I am. When you come out as gay, one of the first things your loved ones say to you is, don't get HIV and die. Those unwarranted feelings are coming up and my heart is pumping because I know I'm about to discuss my sexual health on camera. We're going, we're mobile. Thank you. Perfect. Yep. This here is a rectal swab. Okay. Swab your rectal and then I'll bring it back in with me. Yummy. All right. The rest one is this way, this way. Thank you. I might turn the mic off for this. <laughs> Whatever your HIV status is, you need to remember that undetectable equals untransmittable. That means with the right treatment, HIV cannot be detected in your blood and you cannot spread it. That's the message Patsy Johnson is sharing around Jackson because in the South, black women account for 67% of all new HIV cases among women. That's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of people. I think we need to do more education. The ones of us that's able and don't mind, I think that we need to put a face on HIV. People have a stigma of thinking that HIV is means that you're dying. HIV means you're living. Because it's not a death sentence anymore. It's just a life sentence. I found out I was HIV positive in 1990 after giving birth to a daughter in 89. My husband is negative. My kids are negative. I'm the only one that's positive. What have you seen change in just like treatment options from 1990 to today? <sighs> a big step. A big step, because back in 80 and 90, they only had one medicine that was AZT. Mm -hmm. So it either cured you or killed you. So today, with all the different medicines that we have, I mean, there's no reason for nobody to be sick, nobody to transition over to AIDS. Mm -hmm. I think we all should have a healthy, long, prosperous life with mm -hmm. the medicines that we have today. And you just got over COVID, correct? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Glad to know you're doing better. Thank you for still talking to us today. What was it like to see kind of like two pandemics happening at once? It's scary because you're dealing with enough being HIV positive mm -hmm. and then have to know that it possibly could contact uh, uh, COVID like I did. Mm -hmm. Now, it was really scary because it was a surprise element that I had COVID. When they diagnosed me, I had no signs, no symptoms, mm -hmm. anything. So it's scary mm -hmm. to know that you have HIV and then could possibly contract COVID with the numbers of people that's dying today. How is your health overall? Doing my good? My health is great. Okay. I'm great with my health. It's a great life. It's a positive life, but it's a great life. Um, I expect to have a long, sexual, <laughs> healthy life. Okay, Patsy. For the next <laughs> 30 or 40 years. Tell the neighbors. Yes, neighbors. <laughs> I let all my neighbors know that I have great sex. <laughs> yes. Lovely. I mean, after a 
rectal swab. This is not it. <laughs> It's 151 over 100. That's not great. A little nervous. Okay, can I get you to raise your sleeve or something? And what are we testing for? Um, you're doing the uh, becoming a healthier you. Yep. Which is including uh, HIV. Okay. On a real estate, please. And hepatitis B and C. Perfect. That's gonna be a nice thing. Uh, it's amazing. I have a boyfriend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One. I'm changed. <laughs> what about a condom? Using drugs? Is your partner positive? You ever had an STD? You drink? Uh, maybe two a week. You want to get on prep? I've been on it before. I was on it regularly for like four years and kind of fell off when I started seeing my partner. Okay. We have changed your mind. Come back. Mm-hmm. We'll get you all set up. When you hear something like that, like what do you think as someone who does this every day? I think you should get on it. Okay. Your rapid is negative. Okay. All the other uh, tests will come back within seven to 10 minutes a day. Okay. If anything's wrong, uh, our providers or nurses will come take you. Okay. Um, but if you don't hear anything, I mean, everything's just fine. So okay. our motto is good news. Uh, no news is good news. Of course. Am I good to put my sleeve down? And that's a wrap on our appointment. So I was nervous for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so my HIV rapid test came back as negative. Um, the doctor did encourage me to get back on PrEP, which is a conversation I should probably have with my partner and my doctor back at home. Um, blood pressure was through the roof, uh, probably because I just revealed all of that information on a camera. So I feel better. I'm already calming down. It's always a good affirmation to know where you stand with your health and the best way to move forward. Good morning, Dr. Dobbs. How are you? Good morning. Dr. Thomas Dobbs has been battling infectious diseases since the 90s. He's working to reduce transmission in Mississippi, and it's been relatively stagnant, with the state seeing around 500 cases per year. So the treatments are there. What's the hardest part in getting people access to treatment and education and resources? You know, we started in Mississippi kind of behind the curve, right? We don't have robust sex education, and especially not sex education for um, same gender loving folks. What is the state considering to start that conversation, get the ball rolling? The key to that is partnerships. The key to that is messengers, people who have influence, faith community, um, political leaders, other thought leaders. We understand that the health department is not always the best messenger. So working with them to get the messages out. Do you see any parallels in terms of how COVID-19 and HIV impact, especially rural, poor, black communities? I think there's a lot of parallel. If you look at, uh, at health equity, if you look at disparity, it extends beyond um, any specific disease process. It extends to them all. But on the flip side, we've had a phenomenal success with our health equity outreach in, in the Black community around COVID, with the immunization rate being far higher than that among white Mississippians. You know, HIV is different because it is more stigmatized than COVID, but those same lessons we can use to make better progress. So the South is obviously filled with a lot of misconceptions, and there are people trying to turn those on its head. People like Jason McCarty, who refers to himself as the gay mayor, obviously an unofficial title, um, but he's doing a lot of work and advocacy to talk about HIV and PrEP and prevention and treatment. 
Um, so we are on our way to go meet him uh, at a very historical diner. Um, we're gonna grab a cup of coffee. Hi. What title do you want? Well, what do you want to be called on camera? It's really your choice. Bell of um, the ball. <laughs> <laughs> the gay mayor. <laughs> Um, it's Jason McCarty. Okay, let's talk about the HIV education. Yeah. As a person who is living with it, what do you sure. think are the misconceptions that come with HIV? A lot of people think that it's for people on drugs. You know, it's more of a risky behavior. Every time you have sex, <laughs> you have the potential of contracting HIV. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, oh, I'm going to a wild night out and I'm gonna end up at some wild thing. Mm -hmm. It's... It could be missionary. It could be missionary, <laughs> you know? But I'm tired of people living with HIV almost being looked at as the villain. Exactly. We're doing what we're supposed to. Most of us mm -hmm. are doing what we're supposed to. I want to talk about the event you were doing earlier today. I was taken aback to see any religious leaders, especially in a state like Mississippi, speaking about adding protections for LGBTQ people in hate crime legislation. We are created in the image of God. That's everybody, full stop. I think religion should be part of it. You know, I remember growing up and I grew up in a very Southern Baptist church and my church told me I was going straight to hell. So I gave up on all that. Like why even care? And now, like, being back and being part of an Episcopal faith, I have a very big spiritual journey, and I think that's part of my, my life today, you know? And I think it's important that we let everyone know that God loves everyone. There are still preachers that talk about gay people going to hell, and there are preachers that talk about people that living with HIV are bad. But I also see there is hope, I mean. I mean, there's people like you. Well, thank you. And you know, there's, there's a lot more people that are just like me in this town that actually really care. Let me tell you, it'd be a lot easier to leave. Why stay? People ask me that all the time. And if, if everyone like myself that really cares about this town left, then we would never grow. What does it mean to help people like you in the city you're from? I wish there was someone like me that I knew growing up. Mm -hmm. I think my life would have changed a little bit. But I do it in case that one little boy or girl happens to be flipping or mama's watching the news and I pop on the news mm -hmm. and they see me in my rainbow shirt. I get emails every week from parents. What would you tell yourself on the day of your diagnosis? It's gonna be okay. To tell someone that once you become untransmittable, you cannot pass it is powerful mm -hmm. to someone. You can have kids if you want them. You know, you can live a normal life. There's a lot of people that still think you could get it from stick, um, spitting or sharing silverware or licking from my glass. You know, like, people are crazy. Right. Did you like that? Uh, too, yes, too I, much? Just, I might have to undo a button after yeah. saying that. It is a little warm in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I would also say is, thank God you got it today and not five years ago, because the medicine is amazing today. So there are many solutions to preventing and living with HIV. Vaccines are currently in trial and showing tremendous promise. PrEP is becoming more affordable and available. And given what we've learned in the pandemic, telehealth is a very viable option to start that conversation. After spending some time in Mississippi, I've learned there's a whole community here ready to help you out. So this is prep. I know the conversation can be scary. I had to talk about rectal swabs on camera. It's terrifying, but the knowledge that comes in and knowing your status and the best path to take forward is helpful. So whether you're white or black, rich or poor, cisgender, trans, or into same gender loving, there are options, but those solutions start with simple conversations. <laughs> <laughs>